Hey there, it's Mike. Thanks for joining me for another video. Today I'm going to do my one month review of the Canon EOS R using a day in and day out in the field for real estate photography. So if you're doing real estate, interiors, architecture, this video is for you. And what I did is I actually made a little list. I'd, I'd come home from a property or a day of shooting a couple properties or whatever, things that had gone, you know, pretty well or I liked or things that were, weren't so great. Um, you know, I'd write them down on a piece of paper. So I have kind of a list here of things that I like, things that I didn't like. And when I talk about things that I, you know, that I didn't like or the bad, it's not necessarily that they're bad or just, I'm coming from the Sony a7 III. So these are things that weren't quite as good. I'll give you my reasons why. Uh, if you saw my video about a month ago, I talked about making the switch. I talked about renting the R and deciding to go full bore back into Canon. So these are my impressions after a month of shooting real estate photography. I'm going to start with the not so good. Um, one of the things that was kind of a, a pain, kind of a hiccup was finding a, a good L bracket. Because of the screen and the way it articulates and folds out, just a normal regular L bracket isn't going to work. This Pro Media L bracket is fantastic. I have a review for it. Check out the links up there, down there, or wherever. Um, but this is the L bracket I would recommend. So a little bit of a hassle getting a good L bracket, but once I found one, I love it. It's great. So a couple other things that weren't great um, coming from the Sony. And I talked about these in my preview video, actually. So I'm going to reiterate them, mention those points again, maybe elaborate on them a little bit. Two things I talked about in the other video were the battery life and the app. Those are the two kind of question marks I had when I rented the R. And what I've discovered with the battery is that um, while not as good as the a7 III, it's not that bad. Um, I just have to keep my eye on it when, you know, when I, if I've shot in a couple properties and I have one left, I just check the battery level. With the Sony, I know I can make it through that third house. The second one, I just, right now, I don't want to risk it. So I end up swapping batteries, uh, especially if I know if I have a larger house. Um, you know, for my last house for the day or whatever. So while the battery isn't as good as the a7 III, I don't think it's bad by any means, um, but just something I keep my eye on a little bit. And as a side note to that, the, the batteries that the EOS R uses are the same as my Canon 6D. And I've had my 6D for years now. So I did buy a couple of new batteries that seem to be a little bit better but i was using some batteries that were at least five six seven years old and that may have something to do with the performance as well so the newer batteries i notice are a little bit better a little bit stronger um so i'll probably use those a lot more consistently and just use the older ones for backup so that's the battery the other thing that wasn't as good as the a7 III that i've noticed is the sony app is a little bit better um, and in the ways that it's better is is that and there are a couple positives about the Canon app that are better than the Sony. I'll get to those in a minute. But um, the Canon app takes a few seconds longer to connect than the Sony app from the camera to the tablet. Not a big deal. It also takes sometimes about a second, second and a half longer to get from the camera to the tablet. Again, not a big deal. Um, but the thing that I, I kind of don't like is there's more hen pecking around on the tablet on the screen having to jump around and go back and then click on the picture i want to see large screen whereas the sony app would literally i would take a picture it would just bring it up right away full screen um and sometimes i have to go back and forth with the canon app from remote view to images on camera things like that um, it doesn't also bring the picture up as large as the sony app not a big deal it's still pretty large it still serves the purpose um, but it's just not quite as good so those are the two things that i would say weren't as good and i kind of expected that. that's why i rented the r they're not as bad as as advertised is that uh, or as as bad as i thought they were going to be um, but they're definitely not as good as the sony so keep that in mind the things that were good the things that i liked and i did mention a couple of these in the other video i did about a month ago uh, one, I still really like the articulating screen, folds out, tilts up. Um, I have had situations, I have used it already, probably a few times a week where I put the camera in a corner and I can tilt that screen out and up and it leaves both hands free that I can use my geared tripod head and adjust multiple um, you know, levers there, knobs and, and you know, control those. So that's great. The thing that I still continue to fall in love with day after day property shoot after property shoot is the, is that manual focus, that, that box that you can touch. Here's where I want to focus. 
you line up those arrows, they turn green what's in focus. As long as there's enough contrast and there's enough light, just like you need with autofocus, you can manual focus really quick. It's really nice. Um, it's been a big, a big thumbs up for that. So um, <clears throat> the last thing that I'm a little surprised that I liked as much, <clears throat> I kind of figured I would like it, but I like it way more than I thought, is that since I've been using the ELSR, I have not had to use the spot healing brush to remove a sensor spot on one single photo. And I have not had to clean the sensor. There are zero spots there. And the Sony, I was constantly using that sensor spot healing brush in, in Lightroom to, to get those spots. And then, you know, hopefully I got them all. Sometimes I'd have to go back and Photoshop, especially if it was a, you know, more important shoot for a builder or something like that. Then I was going in Photoshop and I was having to clone those out or whatever. And I have not had to do that one single time. Um, I have not had to clean my sensor. And with the Sony, I was having to clean that sensor at least, you know, every two to three weeks. Um, and, it, it, you know, it, I rarely change lenses with the Sony. That's kind of the puzzling thing. Maybe two times a month I'm having to change lenses with the Sony. And there's just way more sensor spots and dust and things I have to clean up either in post or I actually have to get the... the you know, the, the swab and the kit and clean the sensor. And with the EOS R, you do not have to worry about that. There is actually a curtain in here. Let's see if I can take this off and show you. There's a curtain in here that covers the sensor. So I can wave this around, not that I necessarily <laughs> recommend that you do that, but there's a scent, there's a curtain that covers that sensor. And so there has not been one single dust spot on there I've had to worry about. That's been huge. I didn't realize how much I would like that. Um, as far as ergonomics go, I don't take it off the tripod a lot, but I have done some street photography with it, and I do really like the feel of my, you know, when I'm when I'm hand holding it. It feels really nice. So ergonomics wise, I've been really impressed. I'm also really impressed by the adapter. It's it, you know, you put this adapter on, and it, you know, you put an EF lens on or an EFS lens. It's like using native glass. I mean, it is awesome. I give Canon big props for that. They really did a nice job with the adapter. Um, the other thing that I kind of like that I'm going to go back to the app here and talk about the app. Um, with the Sony app, I had to set the camera for RAW and JPEG and then the camera would send the JPEG to the tablet. And then every probably four or five days, at least once a week, I'd have to go and I have to clear out all those images out of my gallery because it would actually send that image to the tablet. The Canon app doesn't do that. You'll get a preview, it'll show you what's on the camera, but it won't send anything over. So I never have to go to my tablet and clear out my gallery. That's really nice. Um, not that it takes a lot of time, but it's it's just, it's a thing, it's something I don't have to worry about. Um, and that's been another plus. So overall, if I look at the switch, I am definitely glad I made the switch. There are way more positives than negatives, absolutely. And uh, so I'm really happy with the switch. Um, it feels good to be back with Canon. Um, I am not saying Sony's are bad cameras by any means. I, I, I still think they're quality cameras. A lot of the stuff in my portfolio, in fact, probably 99% of it is probably shot with one of the Sony bodies that I've owned over the years, the last three, four years. Um, so Sony's are still good cameras. Um, I'm just happy to be back with Canon for, for my shooting, my style, the way I, you know, do a workflow, the way I shoot a property. Um, the switch for me has been great going from Sony back to Canon. So if there's any questions you have, any comments, things like that, definitely let me know. Leave them in the comments below. Check out my websites, uh, help support my channel, buy me a coffee, things like that. Um, but until I talk to you later with another video, keep living the, living the dream, keep taking photos. We will talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.